praise the wonderful name of the Lord. Let me say a pleasant good morning to Trinidad and Tobago and all the other countries who may view in right now. We thank God today is Sunday and this is the day that the Lord has made and we can rejoice and we can be glad in it. So get the family together, get the family together, husband, the wife and the kids, we're having church right in your home for the next hour as we clap, as we sing and as we worship Almighty God. Today is a special day, not only because it's the Lord's Day, but we thank God that the Tabernacle of Prayer, Pinal Rock Road, we have combined. And therefore what I'm saying is that this service is also geared up for Tabernacle of Prayer, Pinal Rock Road, where our pastor is Pastor Stephen Ramdas and uh, our associate pastor is Pastor Rocky Mahadev who is also here with us today accompanying his dear wife. Also on the music is our music director, very humble man of God, somebody that I have great respect for in the person of, in the person of Minister Denzel Ramdas and he is in fact the son of Pastor of Pastor Stephen Ramdas. So listen, brethren, I know from Ikakas you will be finishing your service, you will finish your service, and you're viewing wherever you're viewing from. We thank God for you. At this time, we're going to look to the Lord in prayer. We are so happy to have um, our dear minister also in worship, our dear sister Janelle. Madeo, she's going to come and she's from the Pinal Rock Road Tabernacle of Prayer. She's going to come, she's going to pray, and she's going to take us into a time of worship right in your homes. Why not give her a big, big clap as she comes forward to pray and to lead us into worship? Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Heavenly Father God, we come before your mighty name, O God. The name that is above every other name this morning, and that name is the name of Jesus, O God. Father God, we thank you for the God who you are, O God. You are full of power and glory, O Jesus. Lord, and this morning, God, we look to you, O God. We say, O God, that you have your way in this place, O God. Fill us with your presence, O God. We pray, oh God, that you will take charge and control over everything in this service, oh God. We look to you, oh God. We put our trust and our hope in you, oh God, Jesus. Have your way, oh God. We just bless your name, God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we praise your name. We praise your name. Somebody call upon that mighty name of Jesus. Oh, he is here, he is here. We praise you, Lord. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name, mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name, mighty warrior, great in battle, 
Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Sing Jehovah is Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Is above every other name. Is your name, mighty warrior, great in battle? Jehovah is your name. He's a mighty warrior. Mighty warrior, great. you Jesus we lift our voices and give you praise oh God all power and glory belongs to only you Jesus oh we bless your holy name God we thank you for your strength God we thank you for your strength oh God in this time oh God Lord that we can stand in your presence oh Jesus you are here with us oh God we thank you for being the God who you are, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for your covering, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for your strength, God. Your strength, your strength, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody give him glory wherever you might be this morning. Come on, we can stand and declare that the word of God is true. The word of God is alive. Hallelujah. We praise your name, Jesus. We bless your holy name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me. Oh, 
and at the mention of your name God every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord hallelujah and we bow before you Jesus we bow before you oh God thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah do you believe that we serve a God who is alive and well? Hallelujah. He is alive, amen. He is a way maker God. Hallelujah. And there is no other God but him this morning. I we stand and declare it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are a way maker God. You are a miracle worker. Hallelujah. You are the light in the darkness, oh God. And we cry out to you, oh Jesus. We say that you have your way, oh God. Have mercy upon us, almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. We worship your holy name, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you for your presence, oh God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, you are here, oh God. You are here in our midst, oh Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, God.
God is good this morning, amen. Hallelujah. He is alive and he is well. Hallelujah. And we worship God this morning in spite of what, what might be going around in the world. He is still God, amen. He is still on his throne. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you all, brothers and sisters, for your wonderful worship. And to bring the word of God this morning, I now like to hand over to the general overseer of the Tabernacle of Prayer Churches, our very own Apostle Janky Rabinanan. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands as we bring him on this morning. Hallelujah. Tabernacle of Prayer worldwide. And I want to say hello to all our apostles in the United States of America and wherever you are listening to us this morning. Hallelujah. You know the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless him in all times. It doesn't matter what's going on. And what's going on in Trinidad and Tobago. And what's happening globally. We are still going to praise God. And that's what I want to share this morning. You know. Sometimes you listen to some news, and I'm a man, one person, I'm not afraid to preach the gospel. But people sometimes are very negative towards churches, and they make statements. Where is the church? What is the church doing? And statement like that. Well, other pastors who don't want to say anything, I will talk. I want to just clear the have the records clear. And I represent the I represent not the tabernacle of prayer, but I represent the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ internationally. Not because you're not seeing us in the road and in the streets. Do you want us to break the laws? As some have been breaking the laws. And gathering and giving things. Do you think the churches are not helping people? I know, I talk from tabernacle of prayer to start with. 
In fact, even in our broadcasts, we have people who will call us and we will organize what we have to organize for them. Be it medication, be it food. But we are not going to stand up to give a person a bottle of water and put that on Facebook. No, 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 no. When we do things, we don't do things for man to see. We do things that God will be glorified. And I am more certain that there are other churches who are doing the same thing. So my brothers and sisters and you who have a lot of time to waste on Facebook to talk about the church, try to keep your mouth closed and say nothing about the church. Because right now, what is happening in the world is what was said in the Bible. The Holy Bible. For those of you who used to say, my grandmother used to tell me that, and look, she come and die and gone, and that don't worry them church people. You better worry about the church, not the church people now. You better worry about your own salvation. Because if you die tonight, you can't even have a good funeral. If you have eight children, the eight children cannot attend the funeral. So you better get your life and your act right with God. And therefore, I'm out here this morning to set the records right. That the church of Jesus Christ will stand up to fight any battle at any time. And it is not me. It is not no pastor. The church belongs to God. So when you say things about the church, you are talking about God. So that is just a warning. You could take it, or you don't have to take it. Or you could say, well, he's not the prime minister. Hello, the prime minister have to listen to. Hallelujah. I want to direct your attention to Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 through 20. And while maybe you're getting the scripture, I just want to say hi to all our brethren from the Port of Spain Tabernacle of Prayer. We're missing you. I do love you very, very much. But I want to thank God that every day I'm speaking with you in one way or the other. I'm typing out and sending messages where you can read and where you can encourage yourself. And let God do what he is doing. So all our brethren from the Tabernacle of Prayer in Port of Spain, from Lavantil, our members, from Belmont, from Morvan, from Dio Martin, from Arima, from Sunny Grandi, all of you who attend the Tabernacle in Port of Spain, I want to say we love you and we will continue to pray with you. And you just keep trusting Almighty God. Listen to what the scripture tells us here this morning. Matthew chapter 16. And uh, I said 18 and uh, 19. Or maybe 18 to 20. And hear what it says. And I say also unto thee. That thou art Peter. Now I skipped out two verses okay. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Hear that word. My church. The church doesn't belong to no pastor. The church doesn't belong to no bishop. The church doesn't belong to no apostle. And just in case you think you own the church, you better let it go now before God move you out. Because that's what he's doing right now. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew, he's shaking it up. He's shaking the whole world to get things in the rightful place. So it's my church. And he says, and the gates of hell 
shall not prevail against it. And he says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I want to speak on the subject. I will build my church. My sisters and brothers, with all that is happening worldwide, everything is collapsing because the Bible says it will happen. And only those things that are strong will remain. In other words, only the things that God has established shall remain. So let me take you to this text a little. Because I want to hurry up and share four things with you in this message this morning. Then, of course, stay tuned for Transformation Trinidad and Tobago. I'll be on at 7 to 8, one hour, with the word of Almighty God. And we have people who will also be praying for the country. Hallelujah. I want to say to the church and to all of us, smile, don't cry. Baby, don't cry, smile. Jesus told us, he says, when you see these things begin to happen, don't bend down your head. He said, look up. For your redemption, draw it nigh. I thank God because I heard my father. I heard the fathers of the tabernacle of prayer worldwide preaching the gospel. And they said all those things. But they never lived to see it. Today I thank God and we thank God that we have lived and we are living to see it come to pass. And I want to say to the children of God, once you are saved, you don't have nothing to worry about. God will take care of his people. So the Bible tells us, Jesus decided to take his disciples. This is the background of the scripture. On what you may call a retreat. So he took them on a 10 days retreat. And he asked them, yes, two questions. Well, he asked one, and then he did ask another one. He says, whom do men say? And I want you to listen to this thing. So it could deal, no church have fallen. This is time for restoration and harvest time for the church. And I say the devil is a liar. And I thank God for the authorities, whoever but the authorities need to thank God for the church because we are praying day and night. And that's why you have no, the numbers going up and whatever. But when we compare ourselves to many other countries, we have a lot to thank God for. So stop complaining. Stop complaining. If you're serving God, David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor have, have I seen his seed begging bread. God will take care of his people. So what does the scripture say? Jesus asked the question, whom do men say that I am? And uh, they give a various answer, answers. Some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're John the Baptist. 
So they give many answers. You know, I, I, I did um, a bachelor, my first degree, bachelor in social sciences at the University of the West Indies. And when I read the scripture, it makes me smile. Because Jesus Christ is a psychologist, he's everything. Because he took them on a retreat to ask them a question. And what is the question? Whom do men say that I am? In other words, what is public opinion? What are they saying about me? So they give, a, they give the answers. But look at this second question. Jesus says, all right. But whom do you say that I am? Whom do you say that I am? I dropped by in church this morning to tell you that this God that we are serving is not concerned about what others think about who he is. He's concerned about you. Who do you say he is? Have you had a born again experience with Jesus Christ? The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I could spend hours testifying, if not hours, days or months. Because all my life, whatever I am and whoever I am today, it is all because of this man called Jesus Christ. I want you to lose focus on every other thing that is happening and stay focused on God. Stay focused on Almighty God. So Peter answered. And Peter told him, he says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And you know what Jesus told him? Jesus told him, he says, Peter, Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. That was revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. And the, upon the confession of your faith, that would never say upon Peter is building the church. Eh? Upon the confession of your faith, I will build. I want to stay there for two minutes. I want you to understand that God can only do how much you allow him to do in your life. How big is your faith? The strength of any building is the foundation. You want to put up a five-story building? Then you need to go deep down. Because the building can take it. My question to you and I this morning is how, how big is your faith? How deep is your faith? You want God to do big things for you and great things for you, but your, your faith is not where it should be. And the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible for anyone to serve the Lord. The Bible even went on to say, for faith without works is dead. So it says, I'm building it upon the confession of your Faith. Number one in the message today. The church of Jesus Christ is built 
on the foundation that we call the rock. And I'll share more with you later on with that. And that's what he told Peter. He says, upon the rock I will build my church. Hallelujah. And he says, the gates of hell is not going to prevail against you at all. Hallelujah. But very quickly. So number one, the church is strong. The church is not anemic. It is not Powerful, I mean powerless. The church is powerful because we are serving a God who is all powerful, a God who rose from the grave. Many died but never came back. He died. And he came back. And furthermore, he prophesied about his death hundreds and thousands of years before he died. He said, you break, he said, he says, break this temple and I will build it back in three days time. What he was talking about was him. Because he is the church. The second thing I want to say about the church is the certainty of the church. The certainty of the church. The foundation is strong, but the church is certain. Because the scripture says, it's not by might, it is not by power, but it is by my spirit said the Lord. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit said the Lord. So the church is strong. The church is certain. And therefore for those of you who are viewing this morning, Get away from your uncertainty and deal with the certainty that this God that we are serving, he is a real God. And he is going to do everything that he has promised. Thirdly, in this message this morning, not only the certainty of the church, but I want you to look a little at the intimacy of the church. So we looked at the foundation. It's built on Christ. We look at the certainty. Not by might, not by power, but by the spirit. And now look at the intimacy of the church. My church. My church. Every one of us who are listening to this word this morning, we belong to God. Because we are the church. And God loves his church. He loves his people. And he, he will take care of us, whether it's a farming, whether it's what I said, it, and I'll say it again, whatever virus here now, that will go. It will go. And some people shall go with it too. All right? Which you cast up. If they give their life to Jesus Christ and they go on with it and the virus take them as well, they're going to heaven and they're waiting for us to come. And that's the message that I could share another time in terms about the return of Jesus Christ. So we look at the intimacy of the church. My church. In the book of Acts, of the apostles, verse 20, verse 20, sorry, chapter 20, verse 38, it talked about Jesus Christ, or God, purchased his church through the blood of his son, 
Jesus Christ. So do you see intimacy? You know we all love people we love. They are different type of love. They have their agape love. You have the eros love. Amen. And you have those three type of love. But the eros love, which is called the erotic love, that's the love with a husband and a wife. I wonder, and I'm just throwing out this, I wonder if any husband or any wife will give their life for, for husband or wife. They're not called to do that really. They are called to support one another. But I'm showing you the intimate relationship and the intimacy of the church and how close God is. You see, this God we are serving, the Bible says, He's omnipresent, which means He's everywhere at the same time. But there's also something else that is important for us. We must talk about the manifested presence of God. You see the money, the omnipresence is all over. But the manifested presence is the presence of God that should be living in you. And I. And every day that we live, you don't have to run down the road or say you run to the church to meet God. God should be living inside of you. The songwriter says he walks with me. And he talks with me. I heard a songwriter says, have a little talk with Jesus. I remember a bishop, a friend of my dad. And he used to always say it in these words. He says when he gets in his car, he pray that God will take him to his destination very safe. And he said, Jesus, this front seat, you sitting down. And he going down the road. In other words, what he was saying, he don't move without Jesus. You and I, not only do we have Jesus, but we have designated angels. When you walk, you have angels. I know people put it in different way. I will put it in that way. On your right side, somebody say you have grace, and somebody say you have mercy on the left hand side. Yes, that's a nice talk. I am saying, as a child of God, you have angels in the front of you. You have angels in the back of you, and you have angels in the side of you. You're like the prime minister with some outriders, and you have people who have vehicle in the front and a vehicle in the back. The only thing they don't have is protection from on top. So we have God covering on their top as well. So stop this fearful business. The Bible says, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear. Man, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you something. We don't ever break the law. And don't, I, I, I teach people. We ought not to break the laws. We believe in obeying the laws of the land. As a child of God. But nothing is wrong. Because the law... Permits five people to gather, but within a six feet from each other. Now, what is wrong? You who are doing nothing home all day, and they say they lock you down. Don't let nobody lock you down. What I'm saying is this. If two people go open the church, one stay by the altar and one pray from the back, walk around your church and pray. 
Pray for the country. Pray, pray, pray. Some people lock up the church. I tell you, when the church open and God only, only He alone knows when it's going to be open in terms of people could come back and worship the Lord. It looked like some of them will have to change the roof. They might have to cobweb the church. Hello, the church is abstract. And as I'm, I mean, even though people say the church is an abstract, is a building, and God does not dwell in abstracting, I also want to tell you that you must reverence the house of God. Because the Bible tells us we ought to be careful to forsake the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is. When rain falling or thunder lightning, thunder and Thunder rolling and lightning flashing. It's not a time to say, look, rain is falling. I'm not going to go to church. No. Come to church. Come to the house of the Lord. Look how many of us now, people grieving. They'll call me on the telephone. Oh, God, Bishop, I'm grieving to see you. I'm grieving. I call them, and I will call them as well. Hallelujah. So there is a level of intimacy because he purchased it with not somebody else's blood. He purchased the church with his only son. You know, I know Easter was last week or week before, and it's gone now. But for, for a child of God, Easter should live in you forever. The Bible says we should renew our minds daily. Take back your minds to Calvary. Take back your mind to Gethsemane. And renew your mind in Jesus Christ. What it did for us. That's the intimacy. When you and I should have been carrying those, that cross. When you and I should be nailed up. For the wrongdoings. He took his only son. When he looked from the heaven and he watched down and he saw the darkness of sin, Jesus, God the Father, sorry, moved his face from his son because the sin of man was so much. And then, you know, as soon as he moved his face, even the even his son, his son, started to say, my God, my father, why have you done this to me? Why have you forsaken me? He forsake his son for you that are listening to me this morning. For you that are viewing, he gave up his son for you and I. That's how much he love us. And I want to talk, I want to say the intimacy of the church. And that's why the church cared for. And finally, in conclusion, the fourth point. I want you to look at the invincibility of the church. The invincibility of the church. Hear what the Bible says. He says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. We are invincible. We are invincible. And I can say much more about that. Hallelujah. The God that we are serving, he's the manufacturer of everything. And we on earth are the distributors of it. That's why he took the few fishes and the loaves of bread. And he fed the multitude. He, he blessed it. He didn't feed them. And he called the disciples and he said, you go and distribute it. I blessing, but you go and do the work. This God, he is invincible. This is the God that I'm talking about that went to hell. A 
God had a confrontation with the devil. He said, listen, you took the keys and I come back to get the keys. No host of angel gone in her, no. He gone single-handedly. And that's the reason why I always tell people, you might see me walking alone, but careful. I am not alone. I am a one-man majority. Because I have greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So the Bible says the gates of hell, coronavirus, whatever other thing coming, plenty came, but the church still standing. The church of Jesus Christ will always remain strong. And I challenge you today, I know some of us, you're losing hope. Even pastors, you lose in hope, pastors. Pastor, don't give up, please. Don't give up. This is the end time. It's tough, pastor. I know what you're going through. I can't remember when last I had an, an, a, a night of rest. I'm praying. For the brethren, for the world, for the country. But God will bring us through. As I shared this morning, He will take us through. Because this church, His church, is built on a strong foundation. Also, is certain. Certainty. Intimacy. He loves us. That's what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. And then of course, invincible. The gates of hell may come up against you. But it shall not prevail against you. Brethren. Ladies and gentlemen, those who are viewing, and this is going to be on YouTube, you could view it again, and again, and again. Before I close, I want to pray for you. I must say that amidst all that I've said, what I've been showing you, that the church will always be strong always because a strong God we are serving but you and I let us not show people as though the world has gone no your God is alive he loves you he cares for us he take care for you I want to let you know, just like you, I'm the same way, you know. I'm no different to you. I face the same challenges. We all face the same challenges. But God will take care of you. I feel very sad for the month of March and into the month of April. The domestic violence have increased considerably to 70%. You know, I listened to the Prime Minister and I'm just saying that because of he made the statement. And he says, you know, the lockdown is a time that you could be with your family. And he's not wrong. Many people have been saying, even the pastors of the people, even pastors have been saying, it's a time to build your family and family life will be strengthened because one of the things that have gone wrong in the world 
is that family life have broken down. Remember the church did not come before the family. Eh? The family came first and then was the church. It couldn't have no church if it didn't have family. People say God made man to worship. Not all the way through. Man was born to have fellowship with God. The reason why we have to worship God, you know why? You don't worship somebody you see. The reason why we have to worship because we have lost our connection. Sin under Adam has cut it. And that's why we have to worship to feel the goodness of God. And that's another point. You can't have fellowship by yourself. You have to have fellowship with your brothers and sisters in the church. So some of you are thinking when this thing goes, you will remain and watch TV. Change your mind. Because something else coming back after. And don't say Bishop put in um, thing on the country. No, 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 no. The Bible tells us that. All right? So if you think better days are coming, I, I don't know about that. Who are those people who've been prophesying all sort of thing? Let them come out and prophesy now. They are the prophets of the land. I tell you today, whatever you're going through, be strong in the Lord. And don't you give up at all. To my pastors, and when I say my pastors, the pastors that I'm the overseer of, strengthen yourself. And let us fight this battle because we are on the winning side. I want to pray for you. But while I'm praying for you, is there somebody this morning, you're listening and you want to give your life to Jesus. Death is not a problem. People dying all the time. Virus or no virus. In fact, I think crimes this year have taken more people than the virus have taken people. Because the virus took a hit. And I really, I don't want to say the figure for crime because I haven't been checking that in recent time. But I know it crossed a hundred. So your life is uncertain in any side. If the virus doesn't take you, some, the criminal element out there where people have no respect. We already have one problem, but it's still doing the nonsense. Breaking into people's homes. Breaking into the churches and stealing from the church. Not money, the church has no money. But stealing the instrument and everything. Until God crippled the hands for interfering with what belongs to him. As a matter of fact, if you did that, try to go back fast and give it to the pastor. And tell the pastor, pastor, I'm sorry. Ask forgiveness. Because this is a different day, you know. Every day that goes by is different than yesterday. So let us pray right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for everything that was said and done today in this broadcast. We ask you now, Lord... To look down upon us, your children, who you died for. You gave your son, and your son gave his blood for us. I pray that you will touch every home and every family. Because I personally believe, and I'm not saying this as a prophecy, I personally believe. That God is against the world because of family life. When we try to legislate sin, passing laws, where two male can marry and two female, and up to up to animals, where man could live with animals. And I'm not afraid to, afraid to say those things. Because that, that bill, that legislation have passed in Canada. And I can stand up here and tell you everything. So God is against 
You see, it is God who established family life. It is God who established family life. Marriage is, is an ordinance established by God. And God said, man, I could take this thing no more. It stinks. It's not a matter we against or we don't love you. We love people. But the Bible tells us those are unnatural feelings. It is not natural. It's unnatural. That may be only one thing, but other things, people living all about, however they want. And maybe the lockdown is for family to get back together. And instead of getting back together, they're buying alcohol, carrying alcohol home, drinking and beating up the wife. And sometimes the wife beating the husband, and then they're beating the children too. So listen, take warning. You know, you had a calypso, not a calypso, a song that I used to like. In my early days, you better take warning. Take warning. I can't say the whole, all, all the words. He says, and avoid your sorrows. You better take warning. So take warning today from Almighty God and avoid your sorrows. So Lord, thank you for family restoration. Bringing back husband and wives together. Bringing back the kids together. Hugging up one another. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for those who are sick right now. Sick on the bed of affliction with whatever sickness and disease. Maybe it has to do with the coronavirus. And we know, God, that you're a healer. So we pray for people like that all over the world. For brothers and sisters all over the world. Touch them right now. We pray and we thank you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. And amen. I want to say thank you. For listening to this broadcast. And I want to let you know the church in dead. The church is alive and kicking. We are alive and kicking well. And I showed you the four points. You can go back to that script here today. And you can see the power of the church. We want you to call the numbers on the screen. Prayer warriors, counselors are standing by to lift up your needs and your problems to God in prayer. Why not make a comment? Make a comment. And as you make that comment, we ask you that the local church pastors are going to get back with you. So join me tonight for Transformation Trinidad and Tobago, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. tonight. Join us. We are on Facebook and several links and you will hear that. listen this is your host your apostle for the tabernacle of prayer churches saying goodbye god bless you and do enjoy the rest of your day